Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my guest today is Anita White. Welcome, Anita. Great to be here, Dr. Wilner. I'm so honored. Well, well, before, well, me too. And before we get started, I'm going to give a little backstory here. So to kind of explain, first of all, it's just great to have a, a true artist on the art of medicine. You're the first artist. I've had some authors, but I've really wanted to include art. And our story goes back, I think, about five or six years. I was working locum tenens at Hennepin County Hospital and walking these long corridors and uh, sometimes they would put uh, art exhibits up on the uh, wall and usually I was just in a hurry to get from one place to another and never really paid a lot of attention. But one day I noticed these uh, artworks that, gee, those are kind of interesting. And I stopped to look at them and I saw they were by uh, Anita White. And at the time I was working on my uh, Locum Tenens book. So uh, I commissioned Anita. I said, you know, I like your work. Can, can you do the cover? And uh, we went back and forth. I had this image in my mind. And so the challenge was to get the image of, on my mind onto paper. And uh, Anita was uh, very successful. And here it is. And uh, that's uh, the first work of uh, Anita White. And that... There's almost a thousand copies now of the book around, and it's on Amazon. So I think uh, that your artwork has gotten some views. So I'm very pleased about that. But today I wanted to talk about you as an artist, and we're going to look at some of your uh, your more recent work. So tell me first of all, how did you become an artist? When did that start? Well, it started at a very early age. My parents nurtured my creative. Uh, talents and instincts. And I started drawing in my teens and I always had a sketchbook and that continued. So my journey of drawing every day was pretty natural. I drew my friends, I drew gardens, I drew pretty places for many years, just wherever I was. And then it shifted uh, a few years into my marriage when my husband's health issues got more intense and I found out that I could draw my way through difficult situations. So when we ran to the ER or when he was hospitalized, I used drawing as a tool to navigate these situations. So it was really in instinctive for you. You didn't wake up one morning and say, gee, I want to be an artist. It, it just kind of happened, right? I mean, you were just drawing away and that's what your body told you to do. It was normal for you, just like some people sing or dance. It was just a part of your, uh, your being. I think that's, that's pretty interesting. Now, let me see if I can bring up one of your works. I'm going to share the screen. And let's see here. Okay. What, if, what do you think about that? Can you see that? Oh, I can see that, yes. Um, Great. So, so tell me about that. What, what's going on there? Well, there's a number of things going on. My late husband, Josh, is... Uh, once again, struggling with his oxygen issues. He had COPD and other lung related issues. He's on oxygen. Um, and I wanted to show both his strength and his struggle. And I was keenly aware of his heart issues too. You can see the heart here. And although I, I didn't Google a lot of medical terms, but I, I understood what I needed to in the moment. I realized he needed to get a lot of fluid out that's why I put fluid in and fluid out. And I was always keenly aware that with all these medical moments, the divine hand was also there, the divine breath. So I tried to include a spiritual aspect to that. And there's a lot of blue in this picture and the little oxygen bubbles are seen. We don't see them now, but you know, felt, seen and felt. And then he is there wearing what I call his odious hospital gown. That was always, I have to say, no matter how serious things got, humor always bubbled up in the midst of crisis or challenges. Right. Well, that's the technical term for these gowns, uh, odious, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, you've done a really nice job. One of the things I liked about your, your artwork when I first saw it was it's unpretentious. It just kind of goes right to the, the 
the core and um, evokes feeling rather than extraordinary uh, detail. And, and this is reminiscent of, of spiritual works, you know, even from medieval times, you can, you can sort of sense what's, what's happening there. Let's take a look at another one. What's this about? This is a fairly charming piece, actually. Um, Josh was in cardio renal quite a bit over the years. We kind of had a second home there. And the hospital was great. They made sure he kept moving. So this wonderful woman, Jean, came in the room. And what happened is what I call the vortex of stories. People thought they were coming in to measure oxygen or like Jean. And Josh would start talking. And on the left, you can see he's listed his jobs. And so he was a great conversationalist. And so Jean was very patient. And she listened. And then she said, let's do some exercises. So after the bond of interesting information was established, then we, um, he got up and he, he, she was very helpful. So it's a kind of a playful piece in a way. It's storytelling and it's also practical. And she's, she was a wonderful woman and I stayed in touch with her. I later gave her the drawing. That, that was sweet of you. Now, now here's another drawing with uh, several uh, people. There are four characters in this drawing. Uh, what is this one about? Well, once again, as you can see with all the oxygen bubbles, uh, concerns about oxygen were paramount. This one was actually done at the local clinic. My husband, Josh, is on the left. And the way I moved through my drawings is I always wrote down what the information that next person to the right, Dr. Colola is giving. So he's talking about how much to use the nebulizer, the inhaler, at the top is the date, the oxygen numbers. Uh, it's, there's a story throughout the drawing. There's Josh, there's his Dr. Colola, the next person is a student, and the woman on the far right is taking blood. And so there's a little tray with all of the accoutrement for that. And she's also typing in information. So I kind of label everything. I have band-aids, blood tubes, bright orange container, uh, med student, and also his blood levels. So uh, I tried to make it light. It, it was not a easy time, but drawing once again helped me uh, record facts and also honor the people that were helping us. Right, there's uh, nothing fun about a doctor visit. And, uh, and I know, well, Josh was, was quite ill as well during all of these visits. And yeah. so um, this, these were serious visits. What did the, uh, the caregivers think of you sitting there, you know, scribbling away? Um, well, did you get some, you know, they, they might've been curious what you were doing or did it make them nervous or did you have to explain to them what you were doing? It was always a curious little moment when I sat there and I, I always said, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to draw you. And they would be surprised usually. And then it just became a part of the appointment and it was always well received. And um, I have to say, I think it kind of lightened things a bit because again, things were not easy. They were serious. We were getting difficult information. And uh, for me, it was a way of honoring them. You can see Dr. Lola's compassionate look, uh, the kind of quizzical look of the med student and the nurse. And uh, again, oh, it was so interesting to me because I always was working with people who I felt were very, very advanced technically. And they would turn to me and they would say, you're drawing me? Or I've never been drawn before. So it was, it was great. It was kind of a surprise and it made it a little fun. Let's try another one. This one's oh. Team B, Center Shift Change, with a, with a lot of people in blue. Now, this drawing comes out of a project that I did at the hospital. Um, I, I was able to draw the hospital over 24 hours, and I did that over a year and a half. And so even though I'd been in places like the ER, I went 
I was not in crisis. This is kind of different. You know, I'm not in crisis drawing, but I arranged to be in the emergency um, room. And I happened to be there about three o'clock when things were shifting. And so I just sat there at the counter and uh, recorded what people were saying to each other as they did their shift change. Like they need her blood. Uh, they said her blood oxygen is bad. Um, what do you think happened? Hard to say, you know, all these little moments. So um, it was just a really active time and I like drawing active times. And again, it was a way to honor pretty unseen moments. You know, who sees a shift change? And then down below was a subjective thing where someone's telling me, oh, it's been a very busy day in the ER. I should mention that that project was funded by the Pat Fallon Humanism Grant from Hennepin Healthcare Foundation, and it was commissioned by the medical staff, so. Well, that's nice. See, I wanted to ask you, um, I was at Hennepin for locum's assignments uh, twice, and I, I love the hospital. It's a big hospital. It's a county hospital. They serve uh, the indigent population, but also just sort of regular people who choose to make it their, their hospital, as well as those you know, who come in with, without a name. And what what was the sort of administrative response? Because if they, if the administration must have gotten wind of this at some point, because you kept showing up the doctor visits with your with your pad. Did anybody ever say, "Gee, what that's what's that lady doing?" Well, I have to say it was all sort of just serendipitous because I kept grabbing my sketchbook, going to the hospital, drawing through some pretty difficult times. And then um, one day I was taking a break, Josh was hospitalized and an accountant stopped and he said, oh, I see you're drawing. And I'm like, yeah, I, I like to draw. And I said, I have a lot of medical drawings. And then he gave me the name of an administrator, Sheila, who I'm still in touch with. And so then, like then I was in a way scooped up by the hospitals, um, the Inspire Arts program, and I was able to work with it, work with administrators and the Inspire Arts program director Wendy Ballinger, Wendy Ballinger, like to put together that show. So yeah, it was it was all it all just worked together, and then and then it got more structured, and then I had this idea for the twenty four hour project, which I did, and then there were other projects. I did a drawing mural this past December in the way back time. And actually, I was scheduled through the hospital to draw the kidney transplant team, but due to COVID, everything changed. All right. Well, we have two more pictures. Let's see. Um, this looks like, well, you tell me. I'm not sure what's happening here. Yeah, it might be a little hard to tell. Um, I had a, I had met a Dr. Rutzik when I was at the hospital. Um, I encountered him a few times and then I asked him if I could accompany him on his rounds and draw him. And he said, fine. So I met him a year ago, April. And of course, many of the patients he was visiting didn't want to be drawn. I understood that. But Rory didn't mind. So I stood in the room and drew and Dr. Rutzig sat there and asked Rory how he was doing if he'd been eating, Rory had a pretty tough time. He'd been beat up in the parking lot at Kmart. Again, the hospital serves so many people with such compassion. And I was really moved by Dr. Rutzig's compassion and his ability to talk and honor Rory and find out what his needs were. This is one of my favorite drawings. Well, I think I it's, a, it's a lovely drawing uh, from the composition. And, and as a physician, I can see that this is authentic because Rory is obviously a homeless person. And there's a little, there's a little caption at the bottom and about falling. He goes, well, my legs are weak and I had a walker at home, but someone stole it. And I have heard patients say exactly that. I mean, that that is true authenticity for uh, uh, not much fun, but that that's what happens uh, in the real world. So I I can tell that uh, you you were really uh, you were really there. That's not something you one could uh, make up. Um, all right, last picture. What's happening here? 
I was so glad to be in touch with the administrators at the hospital for various drawing projects through this 24 hour project. And Megan Walsh, who's the medical examiner, she encouraged me to approach Nick Yu, the preemie unit. And so I arranged to be there. And I was so privileged to be able to draw the tiny babies who were on so much support in incubators. And what we have here is Molly watching over this tiny baby. Oh, tiny, fragile human being, so resilient. They told me these babies weigh as much as a, a can of soda pop, you know, when they're born. I mean, they're so small. And so it was a very emotional experience to see the resilient babies making their way and to see the incredible care of the staff who were so involved. Uh, it was just amazing. And I also saw a baby who was very fragile, who'd been born to a, a mother who had used drugs. So it was, it was very real too, you know. And uh, I'm glad to be there. Well, I know that since you started these hospital drawings, your your husband, uh, uh, Josh, has passed away. And I wanted to express my, uh, you know, condolences. And I'm, I'm happy to see that, you know, some people would have just said, okay, that's it, I'm done. I don't ever want to go to the hospital again. You know, I, I, I've had it. But somehow you've, been able to sort of form a more symbiotic, uh, positive relationship with uh, the caregivers and the institution uh, that I think is really uh, miraculous. <laughs> I tell you, Dr. Wilner, I am so honored and pleased to continue my relationship. And even now, being unable to go there with COVID, I, I send them a weekly um, musing and drawing like this past week it was about elevator stories you know i see somebody in the elevator and usually draw them after but they tell me you know i've been a nurse for 29 years or i'll be here until 11 30 tonight cleaning so anyway um these weekly musings and drawings have helped me connect stay connected and actually after josh died even though i had experienced a lot of challenges there it was, it's also always been a wonderful place for me and I'm grateful for my relationship to Hennepin Healthcare. Well that's that's fantastic. Now if somebody wanted to see more of your uh, work where where would they go? Is there a website? They could go to um, there's the hospital field notes blog um, and also uh, that well that has I just posted last night the link that describes my 24 hour project. Great. So Great. that would so be the best way. I'll put these up here in the, okay. uh, in the show notes. Well, Anita, I want to thank you very much for sharing your drawings uh, with uh, the listeners and uh, viewers of the uh, art of medicine. And it's, it's, it's just great to see your, your work. And thanks again for doing the cover. I know that wasn't one of your easiest projects. <laughs> oh, it was a joy. And it's so good to see, see you in person, Dr. Wilner. And I wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you.